I'm going to show you how to turn a Stormtrooper helmet that's clean into a Sand Trooper look. Hopefully we'll move from this to this with the greatest of ease. There are a multitude of colors you're probably going to need for this project. It sucks. I wasn't able to find what I wanted, but maybe your local Walmart will have the correct colors needed. What are those colors? I'll probably have to add it in a voiceover because I don't remember. I know burnt umber was one of them. So I grabbed as many as I could that were close to the colors I normally used. The overall rule of thumb is always darkest to lightest. Here are some extra colors I threw in for the hell of it. Just in case, you know, a little extra flair. Never hurt anyone. As always, take it as a grain of salt. Feel free to experiment. And these are all acrylics. So you can wash them off with water if you so choose or you screw up. Why am I wearing gloves? Because I have a latex fetish, asshole. Don't judge me. It looks like cat shit, to be honest. Let's like move in for the zoom in. Yeah, there we go. That looks like just nice cat diary and shit. Not dark enough. You want a burnt umber as your darkest brown color. But they had nothing. I'm going with this. It's going to be a fuck fest. A glossy brown. I wouldn't really recommend it. That took longer than it should have. Eh, let's see. Real brown. Not the best choice. A little lighter. Nutmeg is actually a color you do want. In fact, it's so close to the other brown that it's worthless. Like, the shade and hue is ever so slight. This may be fine if you're a stickler for details. Oh, by the way, after I complete this helmet, I'll be giving it away. I forgot to mention that. Probably should have said it at the beginning of the video to keep you interested. <laughs> so, if you give a crap and you actually want the helmet, comment the video. Because I'm not going to try and find all 100,000 subscriber names and put them in a name generator. Uh, I spend enough time sitting in a computer as is. Don't mind the cat in the background, he's just a douchebag. Medium gray. You do want gray colors, obviously. We're trying to recreate sand as best we can. I probably overdid it there, to be honest. You'll probably go through the gray colors faster than you go through the brown colors. I'm not quite sure why. This should have been up there, actually. This isn't even going to be in order, so don't sweat it. What in the name of dick? Would you animals fuck off? This will probably have to be a uh, voiceover. Hey, quit fighting, you, you sons of a bitches. What the? You see what I'm dealing with? Do you see this? This is madness. Look at Smokey casually. Oh, God. After you have your paints laid out, mine are not actually the order it should be in as you can see these two colors are here when they should be here but what does it matter i know what the fuck i'm supposed to be doing it's been a long time since i painted these uh all these paints dirt cheap they're usually 50 cents maybe up to a dollar 37 for like uh this one right here foam brushes you can get a whole bag of these things for 325 25 of them so there you go you only really need 12 but once again, sorry about the lighting. I only have one light currently. I'll have to buy another one. Dog broke one, and my ex-girlfriend broke the other, and I only had three. As I said, darkest to lightest. Fortunately, it's this. And this is actually so super easy, it's not even funny. It would help if you had a general idea what you're going for. You know, so if you have any reference photos you want to use, probably be a smart move, to be honest. Uh, I'm just going to wing it. Yes, there we go. Nice, happy trees. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Looks like a nice pile of shit. So let's give this guy some sort of story. Some sort of didgeridoo shit on his head. You get me? Look at that. Right down there. In the cracks and crevices. 
One thing you might want to go for is realism. And what I mean by that, here's some areas where dirt will congregate. If you have paint blemishes, they'll only help you. Under the eyes, right in here. I probably should have took the uh, tent out for the lenses. Let's do that now. This isn't terribly interesting, I'm sorry. So I'm only gonna go that far. Looks like a hot mess, doesn't it? Son of a cock! You can let it dry. I never do. And you get yourself a wet rag. Oh my god, Choochie! What are you doing? What do you think you're doing? Get out of here! Now depending on how long you let it dry out, could really change how it looks. Now the water, shit, I'm sorry. I need someone to help me with this, <laughs> like for real. Blame my ex-girlfriend for leaving. This would have been her job. Now you see how the water is dispersed on the rag itself? And look how it has a more natural dirt look. Crazy, right? But remember, you don't wanna go crazy. The more time and the more delicate you are with it, the better it can actually come out. This all really depends on you as a person. Like anything, if you rush it, which we're gonna do, we're rushing this. Probably shouldn't do that at all, in all honesty, because I'd like people to actually learn this technique without it being flawed. Yeah, let's get that a little bit cleaner. Let's go deeper in there. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, by the way. Mistakes are the best teachers, and sometimes when you fuck up, you come up with something so much better than what you had planned. That's the one thing I've learned about this overall. That's a piece of hair right there, son of a bitch. Kick me in the balls and call me Sherman. Just need that hair. Ah, oh, give it to me, you little slut. Come on, give me the hair. Oh, you shit. That's the problem with rubber gloves, bro. Got it. See, this area we left more drying. And notice how this breaks up differently. Kind of cool, right? It's like Bob Ross if he had a dirty mouth and he was teaching you to draw Star Wars, I mean, paint Star Wars garbage. Now, you see what I'm doing right there? Leaving that very, very prominent mess. You don't have to do that. You could completely get rid of it or you could play to its strengths. You know, like you actually tried rubbing this off and it didn't go well. Like my shower floor, for instance. That's my inspiration. I was about to ask it. You may not have seen it, but if you have, you know what I'm talking about. This is going to take way more effort now. Also, depending on how damp your rag is, that can alter how quickly this goes and how much paint it takes with it. Too much and uh, it comes, too much water and it comes right off. Too little water and then it's like a struggle. Fortunately, I wasn't quick with this. That's why I only do it in small segments. So this gives you an idea of what happens when you go too far out. And you kind of always want it to look like you don't want it to look obviously like paint. That's the overall goal here. You have to do everything in your power not to make it have streaks like paint. As I said before, paint blemishes can be your friends. Look at that. The cracking in the paint then holds onto it. It's a much more natural look. We're going for raw dog shit here. Probably gonna have to edit out cursing because God only knows making a video like this might actually interest some kids. 
then they don't show up on my channel when they shouldn't be there. And the parents are, it was this guy painting a stormtrooper helmet with acrylic paints. And he said things like penis and vagina. My little Robbie has never been exposed to those things. Meanwhile, Robbie has like a Pornhub account you wouldn't believe. It's not great. It's not how I wanted it to be. I rushed too far ahead to uh, make a point or show something and it only succeeded in ruining what I was doing or what my efforts were intended to be. But as I said many times before, mistakes are the best teachers in this instance. And plus it's all acrylic paints. So if you're following along, and you do something you don't like, you can always pause the video, start over. No harm, no foul. Uh, how are we gonna go about this? Hmm. Let's say he fell on his head. Let's say the stormtrooper is as dangerous as I am in a first person shooter. He was so far in the zone, he fell down some stairs into a, just a giant mud patch. Now this time, we're not gonna go too far ahead. This is our focal area. Don't be afraid to do that either. See, I see why Bob Ross like painting shit and talking to a camera. I just wanna sit here and go, look at this, it's gorgeous. It looks like tempered dog shit. I love it. Add it all over the place. do I twist sometimes makes things more random and it also gives a look like it's trying to rub this crap off once again my inspiration for this is shower floor specifically mine yeah, I might as well get in here since I'm over here right Now I'm packing it in there. Just packing it. Oh yeah, give it to the thing. So there we go, that actually has a look of something that's just plain dirty rather than painted. Shit balls, I forgot how long this takes. <sighs> I might have to add some music or something. Let's go heavy in here. Show what happens when you do that. Well, on that side's drying. Notice how we have this design here. Let's say it keeps going down into there. One thing I notice about most people who paint or weather their Stormtrooper costumes, they make one fatal flaw that I've noticed. And that is 
they stay to a singular color. Nah, that's not bad. Oh, I should have took the fucking hoof mics out. Fuck. I glued one of them in. <laughs> so that fucker's not coming out. Uh, didn't plan this. And we stay with the pattern. Just in case you create a pattern or your painting in one presents itself, you stay with it and create a story from it. You give the trooper itself an identity. Because no two sand troopers should look alike. See, it looks like this one's been through more shit, even though this one's cracked up. My ex-girlfriend broke him. I'll repair this later with some styrofoam and whatnot, and maybe I'll paint the inside of the plastic that I replace this with in a really high gloss chrome, like a crazy mirror chrome to make it seem like the trooper helmet is made out of metal. But that's for another time. We're focusing on this here. And there's still a bit more area to do, including at the bottom. What the fuck am I thinking, right? I should probably go in the other room and uh, work on a thumbnail for that video. Yeah, I waited way too long. This is Choochie. She's a pain in the ass. Aren't you, Choochie? You a big pain? Yes, you are. You're a big pain. Say hello to the camera, dog. Now let me get back to painting. You should go home. No. No. No, come back here, you little shit. Now let's not forget the bottom, which is what I've been doing before. <sighs> it's a slow process, but we're just layering colors at this point. Pretty much, it's the same thing over and over again. You just move from darkest to lightest, and occasionally throw in some of these colors too.
You don't have to use this many colors, actually. But I tend to go overkill. Let's do it real deep in there. <sighs> I haven't been talking much, I apologize. If anything, I probably added a ton of voiceovers. This is like real time speed now. As you can see, now the, the trooper is starting to come together. It may be a little overly dirty for some. For others, it's just right. This all depends on you as a person and how much you want to create, how deep you want it to go. Remember to layer your colors, but also have specific areas that are dedicated to a color. That way it creates a contrast. It's sort of collage. 
You see, making something look dirty is easy. Making something look realistically dirty is hard, in my opinion. Obviously, this guy has been through hell in a handbasket. And we still have a couple more colors to go. I'd say four more colors to go. And hopefully it'll really come to life then. Bitch. Adding the sort of top colors. There are certain colors that just take it to the next level. And what you want is realism, layering, but being able to see the colors that are underneath. See, now is where the paint reveals itself, and it's a weird thing to say. But once you start getting to this level or this stage, you'll start to see weird patterns present themselves. And I would always stress that you follow it. I mean, worst comes to worst, you have like an area like this one right here I don't like, where you just rip it out. And then it looks like there's an attempt to clean. Because overall, mistakes are going to happen. They're always going to happen. And if you don't have a clear-cut plan of what you're doing with this, and you're doing it my way, which is free balling it, you're bound to come to something. Who knows, to be honest. I say let the paint tell you what it wants to look like at this point.
This is a little dirtier than I'd like it to be, in all honesty. So I chalk it up as a failure. But the only problem was I overdid it. Sometimes you just get in that sort of zone where you're just working on something, you're not thinking, you're just kind of enjoying the process. So as far as the fun factor, it's fine. But as far as... As far as painting goes, it ain't bad, but it's a little much. It's a little extra, as they say. Like this one's really in too much. And here's like the base difference. This is a real heavy job. And this is super, super light. Like it's only real heavy in certain areas. It's the same exact technique used, but completely different levels of weathering. Whoops. I really whipped it. Normally I don't like my troopers this weathered. I kind of went overboard. I was just, wasn't all here, I should say. I didn't pay fully attention to exactly what I was aiming for. And since I didn't have a plan, this is the outcome. Maybe this whole thing would have to go. Normally, I would just strip it down and do it over again. But since this is just sort of like a slight tutorial, it'll give you an idea of what to do. And this is obviously what not to do if you're not into heavy trooper, troopers. But if you like heavy sanding, super dirty weathered, then follow everything I did to the leather. Go ham. Uh, it's disappointing, in my opinion. I'm mad at myself. But it was enjoyable. It's nice to break away from reading horrible gaming news all day. So, if you like it, feel free to comment, you know, and whoever wants to be in on it, you know, just comment the video, and a chooser, a chooser, and someone will be chosen at random to win this by a name generator. So don't get pissed off at me, get pissed off at technology if you don't win or whatever. And that's going to be that, I should just call it quits here. And that's what it looks like with the lens in. I'll make this fast because it's nothing I want to talk about in great detail. My voice probably sounds hoarse. I apologize. On Sunday, Choo Choo was killed in a car accident. And there wasn't anything I could do. I tried so hard. To get to her. To save her. But as always, sometimes she doesn't obey commands and is just hell-bent on playing no matter what the cost. The mistake I made was waiting for... The supposed help people called for me. Not only did the police not dispatch someone to help, they just sent a police officer to waste my time and ask me stupid fucking questions while my dog was dying. Instead of letting me go, even blocking my car when I was leaving, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. If I had clarity, 
I would have gladly driven around the cop and to fuck with him and a uh, ticket or whatever. Had I not been, had my time not been wasted, I could have actually gone to a vet that could have helped Chuchi. The veterinarians that they sent me to were open, but had no vets on staff, which is the stupidest fucking thing on the planet. The time that was lost in that idiocy, I could have actually gotten my dog to another place in 12 minutes and saved her. This experience has wiped what little hope I have left of the world, and has made me a lot colder. It reminds me of the years I had when I was a younger man. This is the last video I did with Chuchi. And instead of uh, giving up on the helmet, which was almost completed, I got out of bed today, as Chuchi would want me to, as she would always do, and I worked on this helmet to finish it. Feel free to leave comments in the video. You know, uh, you don't have to say anything other than what you normally would. You know, I'm not looking for anybody's sympathy or anything like that, you know. Uh, comment the video if you're interested in the helmet. And patrons are already in entered by default. So a random name will be selected by a generator, and I'll contact the winner. Hopefully it'll be easy to get in contact with whoever it is. And yeah, thank you for being subscribed to me and everything. My 100K video, I probably won't even do it now. Uh, the one where I unboxed this stupid plaque that never meant much to me because, you know, even a bag of dicks had more of a sentiment behind it being sent to me than this plaque with some copy-paste message to YouTubers. It doesn't matter. I had this whole thing playing with Chuchi and Billy and all this wackiness. It was going to be my goofiest video yet. And now I will not lie to you. I don't have it in me. Hopefully within a few days, I'll be able to be the way I always was with my sort of weird offbeat humor. But I don't know. In all honesty, much of me died on that veterinarian table with my dog. And I think that lightheartedness is what contributes to my ability to look at things and make a joke of it. But it's hard to laugh at that. So I'll leave you with my best tweet since the death of my little chooch. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry and you water down your vodka.